Hi Stampers, this is Karen with Karen's Blue Ridge Stamping. Back in February, I published a video on alternatives for the paper pumpkin kit of that month. One of the samples I made for that kit was a collar card. One of my viewers asked if I would show how I made this card, and so today I'm featuring collar cards. Now the reason it's called a collar card is because when it's turned in landscape, orientation, in other words, it's wider than it is tall, it looks like a shirt or a blouse collar. So, very simple, collar card. All right, so this is the one that I made then, and I, I was very pleased with the way it turned out, and this looks like a little necklace that I use sequins on and maybe a little brooch or something on the collar. So, uh, today I'm gonna be showing some variations of this and making a sample for you live. And then I'll show you some additional samples. So this is this looks more sophisticated than it really is. It's quite simple to make. So let's get into how to do that. So I have a piece of regular uh, cardstock as my base. This is Garden Green, and it is cut to eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored at four and a quarter, four and a quarter, which is exactly half. And so that's my card base. After that, I have a piece of two-sided designer series paper that's cut to the exact same size as the front of this card. So it's five and a half by four and a quarter also. The next thing I have is another piece of paper that I've cut to go on the front. And this actually used the Ornate Borders dies, which are retiring very soon. So if you love this die, be sure to pick that up before it retires when the new catalog comes. All right, and then I've already prepared the inside of my card as well. And it's, this is slightly smaller at five and a quarter by four. And I'll affix that when we're finished with the rest of the card. But for now, let's take a look at what we're going to do to make the collar for the card. And I'm gonna use this designer series paper to do that. So let me move this out of the way and get my paper trimmer back out. Now, you may or may not be aware that there is a ruler on the um, paper trimmer that follows along with the guide. So now if I put paper behind that, you can see this ruler goes down through here. So what I'm gonna do is use this designer sheet of paper, and this has a very specific orientation. I'm going to turn my card with the fold to the top and let it be a landscape card. And so I need these leaves to go up. In order to get my collar here, I'm going to make my cut at the top of this piece of paper. Now, I want this cut to be exactly halfway across here. This is five and a half, and so I need two and three quarters, two and three quarters. When I have this placed at two and three quarters, I also want my cut to only come an inch and a half in this direction. So I'm going to use my ruler that's on the guide rail and bring it down to about an inch and a half. Now I'm not exactly over the top of this card, so I'm guessing it's more or less one and a half inches. If it's a little off, it makes no difference whatsoever. In fact, if you want a deeper cut, you can always do that. All right, I have my cut made straight down the center. Now it's time to make the collar. This is probably the most complex part of the card, but it isn't that difficult and it just takes a little bit of practice. What you want is to fold this piece down so that you come all the way to the end of this cut and you come up to a point in this corner. So I'm just kind of eyeballing that a little bit and I'm just going to press straight down. And now I have the first point of my collar. To get the other side, I'm gonna reverse that process. I'm going to fold in this direction Make sure I'm bringing this to a point out at the end. Sometimes you need to adjust just slightly. And again, you'll get a feel for it as you, as you practice with this. 
Now what you'll see, and I'm creasing this down, I can use my bone folder, I don't really need to. I'm going to end up gluing this down. And what you're gonna see in here is that I've not been exactly perfect with that. It really is not gonna matter for me this time because I'm going to use a greeting right in the middle of that to look like a little pin on my collar. So it's gonna be covered up. If you're not covering up your cut, then you might want to be just as perfectly exact as you can be to get that to line up in the middle. But again, as I say, I'm not gonna worry about it for this because I am going to cover that up. But as you can see, I now have my collar made. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do now is bring in my card base. And, you know, people wear their collars in very different ways. And so what I wanna do, just for a little visual interest, is to add this scalloped piece of paper in here and I'm gonna slide it down a little bit. I may have to trim it, I will. I'll have to trim the bottom edge of that just a little bit because I want it to kind of drop down and look like it maybe is a camisole behind the collar. So let me trim that really fast. I didn't pay any attention to how much I trimmed it because I know I want it to come down in this direction. And as long as it's within the border of this card and doesn't show at the bottom, it'll be perfectly fine. And that's almost exactly where I wanted it. So we're in good shape. Now all I'm gonna do is just glue. So I'm getting my glue. And to glue, I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet, which as you know, is good for gluing because glue will not stick to this. If I get it on the sheet, I can just let it dry a little bit and then just wipe it right off. Very handy, I love my craft sheet. There's no rhyme or reason to putting on glue. I just kind of make myself a little squiggly pattern however I feel like and go for it. All right, and I didn't get any glue on there, so I'm not gonna worry about having glue on the back of my card. And then I'm just kind of eyeballing that in and centering it on there, and we're ready to go. Now, the next thing is to glue the top or the collar onto the card. Before I glue this down, let me point out that if I wanted a collarless card, which I believe I mentioned earlier, I can just use the back side of this and then the points or the collar is actually underneath and it just looks like a v-neck so if you want that style it is perfectly okay to do that for now i'm going to use the collar side so i'm gluing this back side As you may notice, I'm not going all the way to the edge with my glue because I don't want it to ooze out the sides and onto my card. That is not a fun thing. And then you have to try to get that glue off. Now remember this piece is exactly the same size as my card base. So I'm just trying to line it up with my corners and press down. And now we have a collar card. Now, the final thing is to add my little pin in the middle. I am going to use just one Stampin' Dimensional, and actually, I have used up this sheet of Stampin' Dimensionals, but that's okay because I still have some of this border material. If you use Stampin' Dimensionals, don't overlook that little border. It is perfectly fine to use that. No one's going to see it. It is adhesive just the way um, your dimensionals are. And those are great to use up and use every bit of that adhesive material from your Stampin' Dimensionals. Okay, and the front of the card is finished. It simply says, my sweet friend. No, I'm, I'm mistaken, it is not finished. You'll notice that these, card, the, these collars are standing up a wee bit. And so what I like to do is to come in with a glue dot or just a spot of glue. And I don't see my glue dots at the moment, so I'm just going to flip that back just a little bit. 
give that just a spot of glue, press it down, and again, don't get near the edge or it will ooze out from under. So I'm trying to give it plenty of space under there. Just a bit of glue, press down, and now your collars are perfectly in place and affixed to the front of the card. Okay, so that's the front. And then the only thing left to do is to come into the inside and you'll see that there's a bit of that green paper showing on the border of that. If that bothers you, just trim it away. Uh, do it carefully and try not to get into your cardstock and just hit only your designer series paper. It does not bother me, so I'm going to leave that for the moment and go ahead and glue down my inside and then we'll call this card complete. For those of you who are looking at this little thing, I made this little stand. Um, I use this green glue all the time, and so I wanted a way to kind of keep gravity uh, moving it in the right direction toward the tip of the bottle. And so I made a little stand to put it in. I just used some hot glue in a plastic cup, made myself a pool, and before it dried, I um, put the cap of the glue down into that and let it dry there, and now I have myself a little glue stand. So if you're interested in doing that, you just need a plastic cup and some hot glue, and you'll be ready to go. All right, this card is finished, and now we have a collar card. So let's take a look at a couple of other examples that I made. Now I made this one in the landscape orientation. And as you saw from my original sample, this one is also landscape. But you don't have to put them in that orientation. You can also make these in portrait orientation. This I made out of field and or flower and field designer series paper, double sided of course cherry cobbler paper, Rococo rose and white, and I used a black matte dot to finish off that flower. This is a Mother's Day card. I did use uh, several stamp sets to get this message. I used Mini Mates, and I used Welcoming Window stamp set for that, and this is Pretty Perennials dies. Now, the Welcoming Window is coming back. I'm thinking Mini Mates may be retiring, and I know that Pretty Perennials is retiring at the end of June from the January to June catalog. So if you like any of these images, be sure to pick those up before they're gone. And these are the Perennials, um, Perennial Petals dies that go with the per Pretty Perennials stamp set. That is a mouthful. Okay, so that's how I made that one. And then the final one that I have, I deliberately left this off and I've kind of already explained about the camisole. This could be done with the, the uh, fold at the top in landscape orientation, but I actually made it as a portrait card and have not finished the inside, but um, I put some dimensionals on this so that I could pop this up on the front and give me a focal point um, and a greeting for my card. And I'll just put that down. These colors, um, this is Bermuda Bay card. This is Lily Impressions Designer Series paper. It is retired now. This Just Thinking of You came from the Mini Mate set. And this is a Coastal Cabana circle on top. So that's it. I hope that this was helpful to you and that you enjoyed the collar card. I'd love to see what you create with this. Please feel free to leave comments on the video. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would be honored to serve you and help you with your Stampin' needs. Please be sure to like the video uh, down below the picture. And if you want to be informed of when I add new content my, to my YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time, take care.